what are some horrifying things to consider when thinking about aliens. One theory, from Stephen Hawking, is that if they are sufficiently advanced, that aliens may treat us like ants. When we build dams, we don't worry about whether or not a dam will cause an ant hill to be flooded out. Similarly, a species that is advanced as far beyond us as we are beyond ants might seek to alter our planet or even our solar system to their advantage without giving consideration to what may happen to us. Like to make way for a hyperspace bypass? Hopefully they post the plans at the local zoning office first. The speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. I think that any aliens that are capable of traveling light years to reach us have no interest in our resources. Agreed, totally. To play devil's advocate, however, I would also add the following, a big factor in their decision, whether or not the resources on earth were plentiful enough to justify the trip, would be just how technologically advanced they were. If they were so advanced, that they could travel faster than the speed of light or fold spacetime or something, then it would come down to how badly they needed whatever resources, and whether or not they could attain it elsewhere with less effort. Damn near anything on earth except life itself, and that which certain life creates, art for instance, is absolutely abundant elsewhere. Just about every element, is out there in abundance. If aliens come to earth, I would most likely believe it'll be for one of X things. 1. Kill us. Religion. Belief in supremacy. ETC. 2. Adopt us. The intergalactic draft. More friends for space bingo. 3. Study us. We are the zoo. 4. A search for a cure to heat death. If you can dodge the laws of thermodynamics you can dodge a ball. The possibility of them already knowing about us but us not knowing about them. We have no idea if they know. They could be committing space espionage right now, and we wouldn't know about it. This reminds me of the dark forest theory. Like hunters in a dark forest, a civilization can never be certain of an alien civilization's true intentions. In summary, roughly all life desires to stay alive. Roughly there is no way to know if other life forms can or will destroy you, if given a chance. Roughly lacking assurances, the safest option for any species is to annihilate other life forms before they have a chance to do the same. What a great trilogy. I strongly recommend it to every science fiction fan. Extremely unlikely, I know, but if aliens ever come to Earth it likely means they are a spacefaring and interstellar capable species with tech at least centuries, if not millennia, ahead of ours. In other words, if aliens are even remotely capable of traveling to our planet, we are pretty much outgunned hilariously. I would much rather be massively, massively outgunned than to be just a bit outgunned. If even our most powerful nukes are nothing compared to their technology then we are not a threat. If we pose a potential danger to them, there's an incentive to eliminate us. That's one of the reasons why the aliens in battle, Los Angeles really creep me out. They are powerful and dangerous, but they are still low tech enough that regular. Human soldiers can fight them in a conventional war, and that's why the aliens are so aggressively genocidal against humans, and trying to wipe us out. It's possible that they are fat single cell organisms just loafing around. They're already here. Just like, chilling on our eyebrows and crap drinking mini space tennis. Cantona band music from Star Wars starts blaring from my eyebrows. Our human concepts of morality and empathy are heavily influenced by our mammalian biology. Imagine that aliens land, and instead of having nice little family units their species lays clutches of thousands of eggs at a time. They don't form strong bonds. Life is essentially expendable for them. They see us weeping over a dead child and they have literally no frame of reference for understanding why this would be upsetting. I'm not saying all aliens will be like this, but some definitely could be. That is like Kyubi from Madoka Magica, its race sees emotions as a mental illness, and it can't understand why humans act so illogically. It doesn't see anything wrong with tricking young girls into a death contract to delay the heat death of the universe. Yes. Imagine aliens that think our species has such a short lifespan and reproduces so efficiently that what's the harm in killing a few hundred thousand? For all we know, aliens might not be the little green men that fly around in flying saucers and destroy us with laser beams they could be an interstellar pathogen that show up one day and silently and effortless kills us all without warning. 
Our immune systems would have no idea what hit them. There was a book called Blindsight that explores a cool idea of aliens where they're not your typical little green men. The premise is pretty much what if humanity is unique? What if intelligent life is common but sentience is not? That music, art, literature is a uniquely human tray. That space is filled with cold, emotionless, genius life. To me that idea is kinda horrifying. At least, I think that's what the book was about. I'm not the best reader lol. In other words, what if we are the galaxy's autistic brother? That they don't actually exist. If there were no advanced civilization that can colonize other planets, that would mean that most of them go extinct before they reach that level of technological advancement, which means that we are probably doomed to extinction too. This is my favorite answer. Not the visceral obvious fear of they want to eat slash enslave slash colonize us. No, the scariest thing about alien life is that we just haven't heard from any of it, which means we might actually be completely alone. We are the last human species left, the last creature on earth who could be smart enough to leave our home planet. The scariest thought is that we are still nowhere close to leaving. And there's nothing out there to help us. Just a cold, unfeeling, empty universe. I actually think it's kind of inspiring. That just means we're in charge of our own destiny. That no rando alien civilization is just gonna yeet humanity away. If we fall, we fall because of us. If we succeed, we succeed because of us. The universe is in our hands, for us to explore. That they could be massive, taller than buildings, and eat us like bacon strips. Probably not based on square cube lore and the massive rocky borders in space. Thanks for bringing actual sober science to the question. Aliens could do to us what we did to wolves, selectively breeding a once noble species in grotesque ways, transforming us into the equivalent of bulldogs. Poodles, Dachshunds, etc. I'm sure this has been done a bunch of times, but a world building concept I really like is the idea that stereotypical fantasy races were once all human, but then adapted to slash was bred for different environments. So like dwarves adapted to a high gravity planet, orcs have green skin, so that they can photosynthesize on a harsh desert planet with little food, halflings were bred to be domestic servants etc. It's not nearly the same as you mentioned, but the novel. Brave New World is probably the closest I've read to what you described. Humans genetically bred for different levels and use in society. My main thing is that they'll bring a virus or something that'll just wipe us out cause we've never seen anything like it. Or we'll be immune cause it's too alien, who knows. But until there is actual proof that there are advanced aliens out there, I'll stick to the idea that they are bacterial cells on Titan or something. Maybe all these supposed alien abductions and UFOs over the past 100 years have been alien scientists building vaccinations against unknown diseases for themselves and adapting their own medical immunities for humans to monitoring our progress against our own diseases so when both civilizations are on top of it, we can be welcomed into the galactic fold safely. Maybe they just try and make sure everyone is safe and happy for galactic adventures with their new friends. Backslash backslash. Funny enough, knowing what we know of what happened to the Americas, if we discovered our isolated culture in Antarctica or something, this is probably what we would do makes sense, that they would learn from their same mistake and try and avoid it. I like your theory, even if it is super peachy. That they cold been here the entire time playing farm vile with us. So that's how my cows will help when I have no friends. It all makes sense now. The scariest thing to me is thinking that aliens want nothing to do with us. I don't get why everyone thinks that aliens would attack us immediately. It's one thing if we come into their territory, but if they stumble upon us, we are most likely safe. Them finding us would mean they are incredibly advanced. Anything they could get by attacking Earth they could get far easier by harvesting it from a different planet in our solar system. Unless they feed specifically on brain wars, it isn't worth the hassle to attack a planet teeming with life they may have some weapons, however primitive, that might be used against you. It's far more frightening to believe that aliens of Slash will one day discover us and won't be interested, they won't want us on their intergalactic councils, they won't want to give us medicine. They won't want to form any bond. If they decide to just leave humanity alone, 
That means either they have decided we are not worth saving, or that we are too close to destruction to be worth the resources. They are like that group of cool kids, and when humans find out about them, we try to contact and join them, but they just push us off as that annoying young kid. They'll even insult our haircut. Exactly my thoughts. To them we'll be that kid who sits in corner eating worms and still struggles counting to 10 at age 6. Why the hell would beings who have interstellar travel wanna kick it with us? The assumption that they come in groups in some flying saucer. For all we know they might just appear in hordes of thousands if not millions all across the planet. Also, we like to think that aliens will share the same way of thinking as humans, that is reasoning, emotions, etc. But the only reason we think that is because that's the only thing we are familiar with. Aliens might have completely different emotions or thought processes than us, but we won't know because we never encountered them before. It's like the fourth dimension. At this point it's pretty well established what it is, but most of us, if not all, have no clue how to visualize or properly explain it. I've occasionally wondered if there are interdimensional aliens that can just shift space slash time around themselves instead of themselves around space slash time. Did you ever consider that those two things are happening simultaneously? When you go for a walk, you move your body through that external space. At the same time from the pov of your body everything moves around it, and it is a static object. Maybe they treat us like we treat pigs, cows, and chickens. I've always thought that we would be more like monkeys to them, and they would experiment on us. Uh oh, this one's becoming self-aware. They might bully you. Earth is just the nerdy new kid in school. Yo, check out the Terran here. Still relying on fossil fuels. How old is your civilization even? Like 200 years old, you stupid baby. That it's already happened, that aliens came to Earth, destroyed what was already living there, and took over. That we, humans, had been the aliens. I remember reading a short Seafee story in an old 2000 AD comic book, where a massive army of humans was cruising through the galaxy, conquering every planet with intelligent life they came across, it took centuries, so I assume every child born was just raised to be a soldier. Fast forward a bit, and the army comes across a beautiful planet, occupied by artists, musicians, actors, and poets. Almost zero pollution. Everyone on the planet is pretty lazy and chill. No armies exist because the world is at peace. The army finds these people despicable and starts slaughtering them by the droves. When suddenly, they see the world flies the exact same flags and banners as the army. They had returned to their own planet, Earth. That sounds like it's trying to be deep, but they didn't see that they were the same species. Nobody was tipped off by that at all. Would be scary to imagine a starved, desperate race of beings that are trying to keep their world alive by any means necessary. Us, you mean? Yes. If I were aliens, I'd hate to see us show up. The fact that any life form that advanced that showed up to Earth without wanting a peaceful contact would likely just show up, vacuum up all the resources and leave us to die without any communication or anything. Think about it, when humans go into nature to get resources, they don't kill all the animals. They just take what they want and leave. For some reason, that is more chilling to me than aliens just glassing the planet with lasers. I don't think a peaceful alien would contact us. We are violent and very territorial. Things that would be in opposition to any kind of peaceful alien or interplanetary federation. Do you know how much energy it takes to travel from one star to another? So much that Earth's resources aren't worth the bother. Maybe they are just making a pit stop. The dark forest theory kinda freaks me out. The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path, and trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful, because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds another life another hunter, angel, or a demon, a delicate infant a tottering old man, a fairy or demigod there's only one thing he can do, open fire and eliminate them. Earth, screaming loudly crashing through the forest, sending up flares with attached GPS coordinates of their camp locations. We won't know about their existence until they attack us. We may not even know if they do attack us. 
it wouldn't be impossible to just hurl a comet at us, and we'd never know the difference. Since life on this planet is one big cycle of eating other living things, plants, and animals to survive, they might be so horrified that they press the big nope button and end it all, right? Imagine aliens that evolved on a planet where all life photosynthesizes. They see us and they're like, oh cool. A whole planet full of monsters. Exactly like how would a race of basically grass see Earth as a whole? Or if they are made of gas and are like OMG are they taking the air inside of themselves and then expelling carbon? I don't wanna be carbon. That one day they will just wipe out our planet without us ever knowing why, and that it will be so fast we don't even realize it. Blissful. They can also come in different forms than we expect. You could have an alien made of sound waves or a microscopic alien. Or aliens the size of planets, where it takes 3 seconds for their brain to send a message to their toes to wiggle them. We are only an intelligent species because we defined ourselves that way. Think of it, there is only a 1% difference in DNA between chimps and us meanwhile the difference in intelligence is huge. We are exploring the cosmos with our advanced telescopes meanwhile the smartest chimp is stacking up rocks. Now think of an alien species that has a 1% DNA difference with us lining the other way. Their simplest thoughts would be too complicated for us. The smartest person on earth would be like a chimp stacking up rocks for them. Now think of a species with another 1% difference. We wouldn't even be like ants walking on the floor to them. We would be less than that. And you could go on like that. 10%, 20%, 30% etc. What would we be? So insignificant that no one in the cosmos would consider making contact with us? Is the truth of the cosmos and reality actually really simple, but we are just too stupid. Like expecting ants walking on a football field to understand what's going on on the field. Do we not know what we don't know? We actually call ourselves human smart smart. Homo sapiens sapiens. What if it ends up the other way around? What if we end up being able to travel between the stars and we find some aliens that aren't as technologically advanced as we are? I could easily see us being imperialist invaders, committing the atrocities we've committed against each other on an entire species, so we could have a second planet with an oxygen atmosphere and easily attainable natural resources. That would be truly horrifying. I mean would anyone be surprised at us being the monsters all along? Are we the baddies? You know those tribes that live on islands in the Pacific that haven't had technological progress in thousands of years. That's us. You know those international logging companies that would love a chance to just come plow over the island and take what's there? Somewhere, there's an alien green piece that's just barely getting by on a shoestring budget. This sounds true and all, and I do agree with your first statement. We are basically undiscovered tribes, but your second statement doesn't work because there is no material on earth, which isn't abundant on earth, which isn't abundant in space, maybe trees and crops, but if they could travel here food is their last problem and trees are a cool side benefit.